Praise the Lord. Okay, well, to kick it off, um, we have a humorous video selected by one of our pastoral team, <laughs> who happens to be female, and uh, can probably relate. <laughs> it was actually Shar. So let's go ahead and roll the skit guys video. Things moms never say. So bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look. An empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! Ah! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. That's definitely something moms would never say. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so good. Yep. Praise the Lord. So, um, speaking of speaking of moms, I was talking with Pastor Ken about Mother's Day and about the season that we're celebrating, and and. As you know, we've been, we've been speaking about Rosie and roses and going, God, what does it mean? And this past week in our, in our prayer and fasting, one of the mornings in particular was, was really profound, really poignant. Mike Carey had had a dream, Mike Carey, one of our elders, and he shared the dream. And, uh, and there was a fire inspector who had come to the church to do the annual fire inspection, and he had his daughter with him. And they looked through the whole building and did the inspection like normal. And then they sat down to discuss the problems or the deficiencies, the things that would need to be corrected. And the interesting thing was it was the little girl that had all the answers. She was seven or eight, Mike said. And it was a little girl, interestingly. Um, and she had all the answers. And I really felt the Lord say that he's going to move on children and he's gonna move among the new babes both physically, like, like the, the actual young children, but then also the new believers, the new believers in Christ that are gonna be coming in. And suddenly I realized that all this metaphor um, stuff we've been talking about with roses, roses are fairly um, gentle. It's easy to bruise a rose. It's easy to crush a rose. You know, we, we take very good care of roses. We want them to last as long as possible. And, um, and then so many of, of, the, of the Rosies that we've been talking about, um, Brandon and Jen's baby girl, um, still not yet delivered, right? Okay, all right, so still waiting for Rosie to, to make her appearance. Um, Rosie's a baby, about to make her appearance. And then Wolf and Annabelle, they didn't know anything about any of this and they got themselves a brand new little puppy named it Rosie. Um, John Lowndes went and got a kitten named Rosie. So much of it is, there's an emphasis on the new. 
And then Elizabeth had a dream, Elizabeth Hall, Braden's wife. And in the dream, her father gave her a beautiful, perfect pink rose. And three times in the dream, she was, um, it was mentioned that she needed to take care of it. She needed to take very good care of it. And so I believe that what the Lord is wanting us to understand is that in the coming move of God, and it's been prophesied and we're believing it, there's going to be a harvest of souls that are going to come in. And I believe we're going to see um, a significant move of, of God upon our young, upon our children and our babes. It says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. That means those still nursing. God has ordained strength and perfected praise. And so I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out upon our children and on the new believers as they come in. And there's an, there's an aspect of his nature which is going to be very, very important. And it's the mothering aspect of the nature. Think about it in the context of, of a baby. Who does a baby need most in the first year of its life? Almost exclusively, almost more than anyone else. And, you know, unfortunately, there have been a lot of single mothers and we never want that. But a guy can't nurse a baby. <laughs> I mean, you can get formula, but the baby needs the nurture of the mother. And even in some past seasons, I was meditating on it this morning, different seasons where we saw many new believers come in and in retrospect, I look back now and it was, it was the, the bold preaching of the word of God, which awakened people to, to the need for Christ, brought conviction of sin and they repented and they came in and they were born again. But in retrospect, I look back and I went, so the bold preaching of the word brought them into the kingdom, but then there needed to be more nurture. There needed to be more nurture. There was still too much. It says, raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Both are needed. Both are very important, Pastor Ken. And we tend to associate nurture with the mother <laughs> and admonition with the father. And if you think that's not true, then why is it a thing where just wait till your father gets home? <laughs> You know, I, I mean, that's as, that's as old as the hills, probably. It's probably as old as Adam and Eve. Cain, Abel, just wait till Adam gets home. You guys are in trouble, right? Probably goes back that far, right? And then doesn't it sound weird if you say, you just wait till your mom gets home? <laughs> it's like, no. <nah>, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there's just something about that, yeah. isn't it, right? I mean, I mean now... You know, and now that our kids are, 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 are older and, and we wouldn't dream of, of, of trying to discipline them physically, they talk about how mom's spankings didn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Is that oh, true, mom. moms? <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you got some, some tough moms out there that lift or, or whatever, and they're just like... But, but that's a thought, and, and that's a good thought there, Pastor Mike, because I think, and again, in honoring all the moms, you know, and we, and we do. Man, we just, we are so, so blessed. Um, we were talking about the different aspects and nature of God and how that Jehovah Jireh, you know, in the Old Testament, the people of Israel knew God by, by certain, you know, virtues that, that he displayed in seasons of their life. And one of them was Jehovah Jireh. And that, again, is quite familiar to us. And it simply means the Lord is our provision. The Lord is our provider. Jehovah Sidkenu, which is the Lord is our righteousness. Uh, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present or he's a banner over us. Jehovah, most of us, of course, from Jewish culture know Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. And so about 17, 18 different names that were ascribed to who God was. You know, he, yes, he's a holy God. He's a God of judgment. He's got love and mercy. And that's how they related to God. And one of them that is very unique is the word El Shaddai. And, you know, we think of El Shaddai. God, God is the great El Shaddai. And it literally means, and again, I don't, we don't uh, want to be graphic here, but it's just the actual language behind that that you and I would understand is the mini-breasted one. Or we would say the all-sufficient one. And so, you know, that's kind of hard for us in our Western culture to, to picture that. But there's been many places I've been in countries of the world where 
you know, they've got images of their deity that way. And they were just trying to ascribe something that meant nurturer. Like you said, Pastor yeah. Mike, there was a nurturing aspect of our father. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, we, 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 we struggle in our finite mind because of the fact we see people as male and female. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit world, like it says, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He's neither male nor female. Yeah. But he, he carries both of those inside of who God is. Absolutely. Like Adam and Eve are a reflection of the nature of God. Right? Now God chooses to refer to himself as a he, so we refer to him as a he. But scripture uses the metaphor of, of you know, uh, the Lord gathering his, his, uh, his chicks under his wings like a hen, meaning us. And, and so the mother heart of God is the one that nurtures the one that, that supplies, and especially in those first um, months of life, e even, even a, a year of life, like, and more than a year, like you don't admonish a baby. You don't admonish a baby. You're gentle with a baby. You are patient with a baby. And even in this past week and a half to two weeks, I have felt the Lord speaking to my spirit saying, Two of the fruits of the Spirit that are of utmost importance as we move forward are gentleness and patience. The Lord says, if you are not gentle and patient with the new believers, and even with your little ones, as he pours out his Spirit on them, and they begin to prophesy, as we begin to make room, like I, I love it in our morning Zoom calls, Joash and Ivana will often be on there. Sometimes we'll have, we'll have Macy will come on. We'll have Isaac and, and Kaya, different ones that'll be on the morning Zoom call. And uh, especially Joash will often bring a toy. And so many times we've felt the weight and the significance of the toy that he's bringing ties into what we feel God is telling us, even in the season. So here's, like, when the Lord pours out his spirit on the children, they're going to prophesy. It doesn't mean that they're not a few minutes later going to turn around and argue over a toy because they're still children. And if we have a mindset that says, no, if, 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 if you're going to prophesy, you have to be mature like me and you can't fight and you can't argue and you can't, you know, want more ice cream and you can't stay up late and, and not go to bed, all of those things. No, we have to be gentle with them. Just like we're gentle with our children. You know, when they're learning the most basic things like how to hold the bottle or how to take a first step, when they make a mistake, it would be a bad parent indeed that would berate their child for trying to learn to walk and to take a step and fall down. I don't, I don't know that there's any parents that would, would look at that and go, oh, you, what's the matter with you, right? And so in the same way, I really believe that the nurturing heart of God is of of huge importance for us as we move forward. It says in, in the end of Malachi, it says that before the coming of the Lord, in the last days, God will send the spirit of Elijah the prophet, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. I also believe that he wants to awaken within his people, within all of us, in heaven, there's neither male nor female. God wants to awaken a nurturing heart in all of us. See, because a nurturing heart, whether it would be in you or me or our wives or, or any woman, a nurturing heart, especially when the new believers comes in, recognizes what they need, recognizes their need for nurture, recognizes their need for gentleness, and doesn't admonish too quickly when they're yet young because we run the risk of, of wounding their souls and of, of actually stunting their growth and their development. And so I really believe that. Let's even, let's just, just where you're at in your homes right now, let's just open up our hands and let's just say, Lord, give me more gentleness. Lord, give me more patience with everyone around me and especially with new believers and children in Jesus name. And let's believe by faith that the Lord will answer that prayer. And let's begin to behave more gently with all of those around us. We can practice on one another. Listen, I love to joke. Pastor Ken is, is, a, is a great joker, loves humor. And we, we tease one another. 
but I never feel in his joking that he's having fun at my expense. It's always good natured. It always feels to me like I'm privileged because of the familiarity that we have and the closeness of our relationship that, that his joking is, is, is an indicator of our connection, of how close our relationship is. And we're laughing together. It's never mean-spirited. It's never a put-down. It's never a burn. It's never a, you know, oh, it's, it's not a mocking spirit. You know, and I really believe, even within the body of Christ, that we need to set a watch on our lips and let's, let's joke, let's laugh, let's have fun, but let's never do it in a way that the other person in, like, involved in the exchange feels like now they got to get one in back. Like they got to even the score. You know, I just believe that that has no place in the body, you know. And so we want to edify, we want to build up, we want to become a community where the Lord would, would, would incline his ear and listen in on our conversations and he would smile. Wow. Where God would smile and go, man, they're not saying anything that grieves my Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, I, and again, that's preparation. You know, as, as um, Jesus encountered men that eventually became his disciples there, Pastor Mike, he, he uh, encountered a couple of them that were mending their nets. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that, that that kind of parallels to where we're at today when we're trusting God that lots of people are going to come and become born-again Christians coming to the kingdom of God. But there's net mending. In other words, we pre we're preparing our heart in order to make sure that all of the relationships are intact. And that's even involving generations. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is a key for us, a Transform Central family, because, you know, a lot of times, at least in churches that I've been a part of over the years, children, the, the understanding is they kind of got a basement mentality. They're really not that important. They really don't hear God. They don't really, you know, it's like they're, they're to be seen but not heard. And we really don't believe that here at Transform. We, no. we believe that God speaks to our children. In fact, in our children's church right now, we are teaching and training our children on how to not only like the dreams they get, but how to interpret the dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's been so much fun listening to some of our children have crazy, crazy dreams. And then to understand dream language, as we call it, and because they're valuable. They're valuable in the kingdom of God. And we just want to say, dads and moms, that, you know, we, we bless your children today. And, you know, and please, you know, understand that they hear, sometimes I think they hear the voice of God more than what mm -hmm. we hear, easier mm -hmm. than what we hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. pa again, Mike Carey had talked about the time when he was about eight years old and clearly heard the voice of God and told his dad how to fix some situation yep. that was, yep. that wasn't repairable, at least not, not in his, not the way his dad th thought it would be. And God spoke to him as an eight-year-old boy yes. and on and on. I mean, Jesus visited me at five and a lot of these kids have the encounters. And then also the seniors. Mm -hmm. I was with a se one of the seniors groups here that meets as a support group last week and was honored to be able in, to be in that room, mm -hmm. to be able to bless them and minister to them. And some of them were over 90 years of age, Pastor wow. Mike, and uh, all the generations in between. And that's why we have a a blessing that we want to give to the moms. Um, and I don't know what time that we should do this there, Pastor Mike, but um, Zion Church, we just kind of want to give a little bit of a background to what Zion Church is all about is because yeah. um, there is a company of believers in Vancouver and the broader area, some are in fact as far out as Chilliwack, and they belong to this church called Zion Church, pastored um, and, and, and birthed out of the heart of, of Pastor Gideon Chu and his wife May. And they were from Hong Kong originally. And then they, their associate pastors is Danny and Lucy Cheung. Okay. And um, they've been going for quite a few years in the early 80s. And so as long as this church has been going. And um, we've been connecting. Oh, it's just been so fun. And one of their core values is family. They're all about family. And they're about yeah. restoring the generations together. Mm. And they have been in it long enough to see as many as four generations. Almost like, let's take locally here, Transform Central. You've got Angus. You know, I don't yep. know Angus's last name. Macreesh. Um, Caprish? Macreesh. Macreesh. He's sounds Scottish. Like Scottish. He's Scottish. Ah, Scottish. Okay. Um, and then you've got Earl and Colleen story, right? And then you've got Megan. And then you've got Macy. 
So you've got like four generations. And Beautiful. guess what? From my understanding, they still get along with each other. I don't know. I've never <laughs> been in their home. Earl and Colleen have never invited me for supper. He always takes, takes me to hockey games, but now there's no hockey, Earl. So I don't know what about that. But I wouldn't mind coming to your house and being invited from time to time. It's okay if you don't, but it's, you know what I'm saying? How did this turn into okay. a guilt trip? Yeah, we're yeah, talking about mums there, Ken. <laughs> we're, we're just talking, just saying, you know, and same with Megan. Like, never invited me to your house, but that, anyway, the pastor. That's not that's, a shipwreck here. This Can is not get it what that's all track. about. But four generations of people that are getting along, and imagine generations in the house of God, like taking the Gerda Chepkamas and the Mark Tompkins and, and 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 the Dennis Spence and and John Spence and and all the way down to the you know the generation of mm -hmm. the ones yet to be born. Yes, like the Kayleys. You know, and the Elizabeths and 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 the, the the Jens that are all pregnant. Oh my goodness! Like, what would that look like, Pastor Mike? And they're actually seeing generation, generation, generation. The mm -hmm. baton is going from one generation to the next, but we're not losing our baton. It's just increasing. Mm -hmm. The light of God is increasing, and so we kind of were thinking as a leadership team, what would it be like, Pastor Mike, to have some of their spiritual moms? We call them spiritual moms because they're like a mother in Israel. They're like they pray, 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 pray pray, pray. And um, I wonder if they ever eat food. Um, and, and, and to say, would you guys be able to bless Transform Central mothers? Mm -hmm. And so we have that. It's, it's probably another gift besides a rose that we'd like to honor you with. And so how soon is that ready? Pastor yeah, we can Lane? go ahead and play it right away. It's a beautiful video. We'll, we'll play this for Dear you. Dear Transform family, thank you for honoring us and in inviting our two mothers to share with you on Mother's Day. So as pastor and husband, I want to interview them so that they can focus on what they can impart to you. First, I want to ask them because I saw in them the long suffering that you live as examples. Can you share with us? I always remember um, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 that says that love suffers long and that love is large. <laughs> I always wonder what that means until, until we become a mother, until we have our own children and then become a spiritual mother and then spiritual children. This is so true. It's like the way Heavenly Father loves us, the way He loves, and His love is so unconditional and so large. And, uh, and uh, with that same love for our next generation. So I want to bless you with that long suffering. Amen. May I saw in you that people even asked you to give up on certain people, but you never gave up. Why? Hmm. I also want to impart this because when people, uh, you know, advise me, don't waste any time on certain people, and then certainly I have a story of Jesus. He himself picked the 12 disciples by himself. And everybody knows, even the end, he washed the feet of all the disciples. This, somehow the Lord give this uh, a story in me. I don't know why. This kind of embrace whoever Betray, the one who betray me or deny me or doubt me, the Lord give me his heart. I think it is the grace of God, is not. <laughs> yes, you choose to be yeah, like him. Amen. So, number two, I saw in many multi uh, staff churches that a lot of the wives have a lot of insecurity and competition.
But the two of you, I never saw that in you. Can you explain to us why? I'm just truly blessed uh, to see the next generation doing better than us um, in our natural family and also in the spiritual family. Really, I see that it's, it's not a matter of competing, but really completing each other, that we'll be in lack if just us serving, but really with the family together and with God, what God is raising at this hour. So I just bless each one of you with that heart to complete um, uh, with each other and, the, and no more the heart of competition. Yes. You know, this, the Lord gave me a picture of we all a piece of puzzle. It's not uh, perfect, right? Everybody knows the puzzle. So we recognize <laughs> what the Lord, how good He is. My uh, uh, human. My strength. My strength. Maybe is uh, uh, my dear sister's a uh, weak point that she, uh, she without me cannot survive and I also have my big weakness and it's her strength so I need her very much so <clears throat> I can see we come uh, compete <laughs> one another so I really thank God we can recognize each other uh, in spirit so we embrace one another no matter <laughs> <laughs> no matter what is to fulfill in God's heart he make us one this dream I can witness to that as a husband and pastor for over 30 years that's your lifestyle it's not what you say only it's how you live it so because of time I asked the third thing I saw that both of you honor the leadership and your husband because of that, you gave peace to the family. Can you share about that? Really appreciate our husbands and our spiritual fathers and leaders in the church. And really, God's order is the best order. He knows the Amen. best person. <laughs> he knows the best person to compliment us and to shape us. And really, we're walking together under God's order is the best thing. And. Uh, with the love in the family and also the submission, I feel that that is where we can be truly one. So we want to bless you all with that heart of honoring and uh, to be really one. <laughs> I really want to honor, you know, my wife too. I want to affirming that she always, you know, fill me up, honoring me. Of course, I have some weakness, but he just briefly reminding me but you know always you know say something to encourage me to fill me up and honor Amen. me thank you for this I witness to you <laughs> <laughs> I really thank my our spiritual papa pastor Bob the end time uh, message he always tell the his uh, children is children love your wife and they are very good boy. <laughs> really, <laughs> really love, <their> love <laughs> us. <laughs> and then, like Jesus, love the church and willing to die for his bride. This is why we are spoiled. <laughs> so we want to bless you. Yes, mm -hmm. with this. So we want to say from. The heart of Zion from the mothers who want to bless, bless the family, especially the mothers of Transform. Can you say Happy, Happy Mother's, mother's Day. Day? Wasn't that beautiful? Just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so three things, three things that they had there just to reiterate and uh, and, and the first is um, 
I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I know the second is, is no competition. What was the first one there? Yeah, 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 that was the second one. Uh, the first one was... Um, we need our wives. Help, help. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot. I was like so focused on it. I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. But yeah, just the heart. The, oh, uh, not giving up. Don't give up on anyone. And long-suffering. Long-suffering was the first one, which is patience and gentleness, right? So I, I found that really interesting because I was getting it during the week. Patience and gentleness are really important. And then they come with a Mother's Day blessing, and it's long-suffering. Mothers are long-suffering. That baby cries, and then it wants to be fed, and then you feed it, and then, oh, and now it's crying again. Oh, you got to change the diaper, and you finish changing the diaper. Oh, now it's fussing, put it down for a nap. Oh, now it wants to be fed again. And it goes on and on and on, right? And so God is saying, I am long suffering with you. I am patient with you. I am gentle with you. I want you to be that way with one another. And especially with the new, the, the new ones, the babies and the new believers that I bring to you. And so we believe that the Lord is honoring the beauty like through, through Mother's Day, we're seeing uh, an honoring and a, a, a focusing on the beauty of an aspect of his nature. Anything and everything that we are comes from him. Adam and Eve were not anything that was not already in God, except sin, <laughs> right? But anything beautiful comes from him. And so the strength of a man, the, the men provide, protect, and instruct, and admonish. And obviously play, have fun, love their kids too. But it's really important that they provide for their families, that they protect their families, and that they instruct and, and, and warn their families against sin. You know, like Proverbs, my son, do not follow, you know, the wanton women and stay away from too much alcohol and, you know, all of these things. But the mother is the nurturer. She's the care. She's the faithfulness, the gentleness, the steadiness. And I, and I just believe even in this season, is even especially here in May of 2021, that the Lord is saying this, my heart in this, as you see it manifested in mothers, that's me. And it's really important for all of you to have that heart. So beautiful. Beautiful. And, you know, we want to also just bless the Transform Central family there with some admonition um, and, and instruction. Uh, from Katharina and from Shar, um, as we would conclude here in just a few minutes here. We got about 15 minutes, but wanted to mention to, to you real quickly, um, you know, we're at, a, we're at a generation there, Pastor Mike. We've got 11 grandkids and more coming. Um, and just every, every, I guess, when we, when we look at each child, they're all different. And, you, you know, you can't when I was 25 years old and we were just starting to have kids, you don't think that way because I'm 25 years old. But when you're, you know, at 65 years old, you start thinking different because you've lived through seasons of life. When you're 90, you start thinking different. Um, you know, our mom had a, quite, a, quite a fall two nights ago. And, you know, they found her and she's, she's in her mid-80s and, and um, all by herself, independent living, but could not get back up. And she was laying on the floor there for seven hours. And, it, you know, so we had a Zoom call last night and, and it's like, okay, we got to make some decisions here, you know, and she's bucking it the whole time. But it made me kind of aware that, you know what, it's like, wow, you're in your 80s now. And, and so things change, things have to happen. Um, you know, you got grandkids and great grandkids, but there's something about the blessing, even of the matriarch, the mother upon the next generation. And I'll never forget it, that Shar's mom, Mrs. Wall, some of you might still remember Faith Wall, passed away now, I guess it's been over 10 years ago. And even at her deathbed here at, at the local um, Worthington Pavilion, just up the road from us here, we're just even, even where she was not even coherent anymore. But, but on, her, on her last breath, as it were, almost just before she was passing into glory, the, um, the Lord had instructed Shar because uh, she just barely lifted her hand. That's the only thing she could do. And instantly, Shar remembered that she, she always said, Shar, always remind me, I want to bless my children before I go home. When she said, go home, go to be with the Lord. And um, Shar said, hey, you know what, Glenn, get over here. I mean, she, there's three in the family. Glenn, the oldest son, and then the middle was Dan, and then Shar. 
And so uh, Glenn quickly went over there, and we actually had to put her hand on Glenn's head. And, um, and, and there was a blessing. And then she put her hand on Dan's head. And you see, in the spirit, they say the last sense to go is the, is the hearing sense. And I've seen that time and time again in, uh, on deathbed situations. And there's something about an impartation there, Pastor Mike, that was being released on all of her three children. And it was no sooner after that we sang one last chorus and she was gone to be with Jesus. I mean, amazing. I knew that was going to happen years ago when my father was going to pass away. I knew ahead of time. And the Lord instructed me, get out there to the farm, get out to Saskatchewan, and have your dad and mom bless the patriarch and the matriarch blessing. And, and we were able to do that and honored um, the, the, the protocol, as it were, because they're Catholic background, but I instructed them what needed to happen. And I believe there's something sacred, Pastor Mike, about passing the blessing of the, of, of, of the Lord from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And that, that's the reason. It's kind of a little hard to hear because their native tongue is not our native tongue. And yet they've been in the nation of Canada for all these years. And so it might have been a little hard for you to, to, to get the full understanding of the English. But you know what? I, th I think suffice to say, you know their heart. Like their heart, they love Transform. Uh, they want to be with Transform. It's like there's this connection that is happening between Watchmen for the Nations and Transform Central and, and Zion Church. And there's some other churches too that are really, it looks like there, there might be some dialogue that's continuing to happen. So we're honored and blessed by that. And I really believe there's something of a blessing, Mike, tangibly and financially and, and volitionally, like an all-encompassing prosperity that begins to take place when we honor the generations. And that's what they're talking about, honoring the spiritual mothers and honoring the spiritual fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or, you know, five generations, Joseph, and then Joseph's two boys. And so that's why we are so encouraged by what God is doing you know, in uh, how he's pouring out his Holy Spirit, but first the natural, then the spiritual. And some of you moms have wayward sons. Some of you moms have wayward daughters. Some of you grandmas, you know, have wayward grandchildren and grandpas. And yet we're calling them back to family. We're calling them back to family. And we, you know, don't give up. Like they said, don't give up. I mean, as if a mom is going to give up on her wayward son or a wayward daughter. It's absolutely not going to take place, right? I mean, because the greatest joy... Ellis, isn't it, that you'd ever have in your heart is to make sure that your sons and daughters are going to be with Jesus in heaven. Mm -hmm. There's no degree. You, you can have all the houses in the world. You can have all the, you can have the, you can have the planted earth with a bow around it. And that's not going to satisfy you. But you will be satisfied when you know that my sons and daughters, like, like, like a mother hen having her little chicks around, and they're all nestled together. We're all going to heaven together. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest joy, isn't it, eh, Amen. Pastor Mike? Absolutely. You know, so we, we, are, we are so blessed by that. I feel, I feel the, the family fiber and, and fabric and strength is happening more and more and more all the time. And that's what God calls to, so that when they come into family, the Bible says he sets the solitary in family. A lot of people don't have good family backgrounds, very dysfunctional. I remember one time leading a lady, and uh, she was having huge issues, physical issues. And I told her, I want you to repeat this after me. And I said, say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I thought, man, I'm, I, that would not be the way you would do a prayer altar call. But I just felt prompted by the Lord. And she, I, I thought maybe she didn't hear me because she wouldn't repeat it. And I said, sister, I said, what I want you to do is I want you to say this after me, okay? Just say, our Father, who art in heaven. And she just put her head down. And I could not get her. And all of a sudden, boom, I get taken into the spirit. And the Lord says she can't say it because she's got a terrible relationship with her natural father. And then she's relating that to her spiritual father. And as I began to share that with her, she just began to bawl. I hate my dad. I don't have, you know, and I thought, there you are. God is wanting to restore. And I believe there's those today that have suffered from issues that you've had with your mom, from issues that you've had with your father. In other words, that, that generation that raised you, maybe doesn't, you don't have the healthiest attitude, but God says he sends the solitary into a family. Come on. And, and, and I, I believe that's, that's what God wants to do even right now as, we're, as you're viewing today, is that God wants to heal some of the breaches. Some of, he's, a re, he's a repairer of the breach and a restorer of the past to dwell in. And you know what? Like, don't feel condemned. Don't feel under guilt and condemnation. A lot of times that's how they also feel. It's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. No. 
God is a God of forgiveness. He, he releases you, and he wants to release you to your destiny, that you fulfill your destiny. We've all made mistakes, and they said that on the screen there today, too. We've all made mistakes as parents. Mothers have made mistakes. Father, we're going to make mistakes till the day that we die. But it's about God joining the hearts of the generations together. And so uh, anything more that you wanted to add before we call no, the ladies up? Let's, let's have the ladies come up. And okay, so um, our sweeties are going to come on up, and they want to kind of just give us our final admonition. And so... Our, we, we've left these seats warm for you guys. All right. See how nice we are, us guys, right? That's another gift for you, honey, by the way. A warm seat. Okay. So here you go. And, and you know what? I just want to say about Katarina, you guys, I, was, I almost call her Mother Teresa. And because, you know, as you guys know, Mother Teresa spent most of her time in Calcutta, India, and she ministered a lot to those that... that people would not minister to, even churches would not minister to them. And, and this journey that Katharina has been on in the last year plus, couple years, has been basically, we call her Mother Katharina, <laughs> you know, because she has been out there, you know, touching the untouchables, touching the ones that, that um, you know, that we kind of almost see as castaways, but our Heavenly Father sees them different, you know, and so just want to want to bless her and bless Shar for just their, their ending words as well. Well, I think I'm going to start. Um, I often think of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And uh, I believe there is a, probably a time, maybe one of the future Mother's Day services, to talk about, because there's so many different aspects and so many different areas um, that we can cover by watching her how it was to be Mary. And one of the biggest things that I take away is the Bible says that Mary pondered things in her heart. And I, you know, we often, when we talk about mothers, we talk about mothers and babies. But as your children grow, you never stop to be the mother. And that nurturing and, and everything goes on. And so often, um, as they're becoming their own people, they carry on their own decisions and their own things and you can do little but to just watch to keep the love connection open and to ponder those things in your heart before the lord because you are their hope you are their prayer you are their lifeline before god and uh when i started um the whole um involvement with uh, people on the street the Lord broke my heart by just taking one look at somebody. And these are the words that came to my mind, or these are the thoughts that came to my mind. And they were, that is somebody's baby. He has a mother. So I want to pray for all of you moms whose children have gone astray, whose children are, for whatever reason, out there, and you feel like you do not have the control to, to love them, to nurture them, to heal them to pull them back in but the lord sees he's faithful he's that mother hen that ever watches over them and he's the one that brings people um, like so many that are out there that come with a warm meal with a piece of clothing with a kind word and and they're constantly mothering them because your prayers are going forth and when your hands cannot touch them the lord has said somebody else to touch them in their affliction. So Father God, I just lift every mother that has been exhausted and desperate and lonely, Lord God. I ask that you would pour in such strength within her body, Lord, that she would be able to run, knowing that you have not left her alone, knowing that, Lord God, you see everything and your hand is upon her child that, Lord God, you have heard her prayer and you have sent the enforcements, Lord God, to stand when she cannot stand anymore. So, Lord, I lift all those moms that have faithfully called upon your name to return their children home, Lord God. And I just join with them and I say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord 
strengthen you and, and may you believe, may you see him, may your eyes, when everything feels like it's falling apart, be on him. May your heart be connected to his heart because his heartbeat is for, for the, your children's lives to go on in wholeness, in healing, in prosperity, in wellness. So we just bless all those moms out there. May God bless you and keep you strong. You are not alone. Amen. That is so true. And you know, um, yeah, I've watched you, Katharina, and we spent some time talking about what you're doing on the streets and your compassion and, and taking the hands and the feet of Jesus to those that so many would just not even, not even notice or pay attention to. It. And it's such an example and such a beautiful blessing of the heart of Jesus. So from one mom to another mom, I bless you and what you're doing. <laughs> it's awesome. We can so learn from you. And you know, for Mother's Day, watching that, that little clip that was so cute and funny and, and mothers can relate to it about things that moms never say, um, that's a season of a mom's life that, that can feel forever. But there's so many of us moms that we're so diverse. There's so many different things that we face. Um, a lot of things alike, but many different stages of life that we are all in. And I just want to recognize, like, all of the moms that um, deal with infants, toddlers, teens, adult children, those moms that are dealing with the empty nest, and they're getting used to just the two of you at home now, or if you're a single mom in an empty nest, just yourself. Um, those with your pregnant with your first child or with your 10th, I might be pushing it by saying 10th, but larger, um, we bless you today as well. Those of you that have miscarried and those of you who's lost children through addiction or to the world, those of you whose children have passed before their time, your arms are empty and your heart is hurting, you know, we lift you up today and you're not alone you're alone in some sense of the word, but you're not alone. Deep down, the Holy Spirit is with you, and I, we pray that there will be people that come around you. Our hearts are with you. Those that have adopted or have taken in foster children, like what a beautiful thing, what a, what a courageous thing to do, and what an honoring thing to do. We honor you for doing that, and your children do too, even if they don't recognize it yet. Those adopted and foster children are grateful to you. Those experiencing infertility, we speak life to your womb. We speak life in the name of Jesus. Mothers who have lost their own mothers, we lift you up and we keep you in our hearts today as well. And you spiritual moms, bless you for what you're doing to your spiritual sons and daughters by raising them up in, in a godly way. And I also was thinking this past week about you know, there's many women in the Bible, like Katharina mentioned, Mary, and we can think of all of these amazing women that we look up to and that we can learn about. There's Abigail, there's Naomi and Ruth, there's Eve, there's um, so many, like there's so many. And, and then I thought, okay, well, you know, we can look back on time and think, well, you know, women were demeaned back then and they were lesser than the men. And nowadays women have a struggle on women want to be men and there's all this stuff going on. And so I thought, God, you made man, you made woman. You made mothers. That was your plan. So I thought, Jesus, what's your viewpoint? Like, show me what do you, like, what's your, pers what's your perspective on women? And then he, he, he brought me to the cross. And there, so there's Jesus. He's on the cross. He's dying for the world. He's carrying all of our sin, all of our pains, physical, mental torment, the deepest, darkest, agonizing place that he, or like no one else will ever be in that place that he was in for that time that he was there hanging on the cross. And then after all that that happened. So on that point of his lowest, hardest place, who was he thinking of? You know, it said that on your deathbed, you want to know what a person is saying on their deathbed. You want to hear their last words. Well, what was Jesus' last words? You know what he did? 
He looked down from the cross at his best friend, and he said to John, he said, Behold your mother. He was thinking of his mother at that time. That is just staggering. How much does he love you? He loves you, mothers. He loves you and he values you. Then he looked to his mother and he said, Behold your son. So he already had it in play how he, that he realized his mother was going to have this empty space inside. She realizes he's the son of God, but that was her son. He was an infant in her arms at one time. And she picked him up when he bruised his knee, and now he's there dying for the world. And so there would have been a huge gap like any average mother would not even be able to carry. And he already filled it with his best friend saying, take care of her. And you, come, he's your son. He did that for her. And so I was so blessed, and I thought, I just want to leave that with you to ponder on and to to just allow your heart to be open to the love of God, because he really does love you. So I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. God bless you.